Hey there. We're going to go over how to work with extruded forms, those extruded tubes, and how to turn those into finished pots rather than just, in this case, square macaroni. So some of the examples that I've got are um, like this where there's not necessarily an added top, but it does have an added bottom. You can make one that has an added top as well, or you could actually add multiple pieces together. And remember, we can extrude round tubes or square tubes. If you really want them, we've got a hexagon uh, tube as well, but I think that's a little bit harder to work with. But if it is something that inspires you, we can make that happen. Um, our first assignment is going to be with just a smaller, perhaps simpler, it does not need to have additional pieces with the exception of the bottom, but it should at least have a bottom um, so that it can function as a container of some sort. We will be adding um, scurfito to our first ones. Our second ones just need to have more pieces added to them so a more complex form. Uh, so this is an example of one with a little bit more complex bottom to it as well as top so it's not just a simple form. Again your first ones can be more complex as well but your first ones have to have that scurfito design like we've talked about in class. Uh, here's an example of one that actually goes more horizontal rather than vertical. It looks like some weird little sea creature with a mouth. All right, so this is a little handy dandy thing that makes it so that you can cut the edge so that it is a little bit more of a right angle. Sometimes when we cut them off at the uh, extruder, sometimes they don't come out too square. So this little guy is actually an adapted miter box and I'm going to bring that down and sometimes it helps if you have a little assistance, um, have somebody else kind of hold things for you a little bit. But notice my fingers are inside and that makes it so I can cut it without crushing the form as much. So I've got to kind of brace that form a little bit so my fingers are on the opposite side of the cut no matter where that is. So it may do a little bit of a funky thing to it but it should work pretty well there. You can cut the top the same way. So I'm going to set that in my miter box. I'm going to bring it out there so that my lowest part, if I want it to be relatively, again, relatively square, I can do that with top and bottom. But again, I need to kind of protect it a little bit because otherwise it does kind of crush. It's an imperfect system, but it does work okay-ish. So that's a little bit more square and I can work with that. And so there we go. Um, you do not have to have a square flat top. Uh, you can pinch it into different shapes so long as the form is soft enough to form. This one, if I tried to squish it very much, it probably would crack. It's getting pretty, a little bit solid, so I need to watch that. But so long as the tube is soft enough, you can shape that into different things. And then the top you can cut or form however really works for you. Uh, this one actually has a little bit of a flare to the top. So you can manipulate these. You don't have to have it be just a square tube with a flat top. You've got choices there. Okay, so I've got my extruded form and now I'm going to make the slab for my base. You can use block or barrel clay, but odds are good you're going to roll out a piece for that. So I've got my clay there and I probably want to use number two rolling guides. Remember you place those to the outside edge Make sure that your rolling pin will sit on those and then start slightly onto the clay and then flip it. And you want to make sure you flip that so that it's less likely to warp. Okay. Less likely. I make no promises, but less likely. Okay, so there is going to be my base. And I have to decide how much is it going to extend. Is it just coming to the edge of the piece like this one? or is it extending at least a little bit, or is it extending even more and starting to become something more design oriented in and of itself. That's something you've got to decide. Keep in mind, how whatever your decisions are, you do need to make sure that it's really going to bond. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and have it extend a little bit past, but I'm going to use my, my pot as a gauge for where I need to put that. So I'm gonna go ahead and 
score that edge. Now you could just wet the edge a little bit to make a mark so you can see it. But again, I want to score that edge. Really rough that surface up. And the drier your clay is, still in the soft stage, you don't want to attach things that are bone dry, but the drier the clay is in that range, the wetter your slip should be to really make sure that bonds. Again, work that up, make sure that it's nice and squishy. And it's very important that both parts have the scoring, so I'm going to set it down so I can see where it goes. I could also trace around it. Um, either of those techniques works. So again, I want to score that edge, make sure it's nice and accepting. I'm going to wet that just a little bit more with some slip. And you've probably found that it is problematic if you don't have that wet enough. It may not bond. It'll seem like it when it's wet. And when you're done, make sure that you close that up. And really, really make sure that snaps closed. And line that back up with your mark. I'm going to squish that in a little bit. And if you want it just to be right up against the edge, you can cut it right up against there. Again, I'm going to go in just a little bit. Now you could use, if you want to make sure that it's about even, you could use something else to kind of guide you. So in this case, I'm using the edge of the rolling guide so that I cut it all kind of consistently. So I'm just laying that up against the edge. I want to make sure my needle is not cutting back underneath to cut a bevel. Okay. And now I want you to notice that is a really ugly edge. I need to make sure I clean that up. This is my favorite tool to do that, although I don't like it when I get it out of the container and it's all crusty. But I can use that to get up against the edge. So I'm going to use that, get that nice and cleaned up, blend that in. And off camera I've got a sponge that I'm kind of wiping that off on. I could also take a little paintbrush perhaps and clean that up, but I want that to be a really nice clean edge. I have a little sponge here I can wipe with that too, but remember that's going to make that surface kind of gritty because I've exposed some grog, so I have to be really careful about that. But I do need to make sure that that's really compressed together at the seam or it will come apart. Now if you wipe over the edge, you've got to rub over with your fingers because again that's going to make it gritty. And I want to make sure that the top is cleaned up too. If I'm leaving it just a flat edge, again for this first one that's okay, but I want to at least get it cleaned up. So I put the sponge on it and I kind of wet that edge. You could also just take your finger and clean that up. But that, that's pretty much what I need to do for this piece except I want to put my initials on the bottom. Do any touch-ups like you would on any other kind of pot. Clean up the edge, clean up the form a little bit, do that little bit of fussing, and then you're going to be ready to do the um, slip application or underglaze application for your scurfito. But otherwise, I think that's it for making that pot a nice, simple pot. If you wanted to go further, same thing. You can add a top to it. You can cut the different um, kinds of edges there. You can do all kinds of other things, like on this one I cut out segments and put those together and then scored and slipped, put those together, set them on the base, cut that and form that into whatever it is I wanted. Um, so think about your design, what you want to do with that. Now this is an incised design if you wanted to do something like that, but you could also do like this is an impressed design so I can use some of those, those other impression tools um, so I can do other things, but then for the graffito assignment, you would have to do like the graffito in this part right there. So 
you got options. On your second one, you can do whatever kind of decorations you want to, or you can leave most of it smooth. This is using that little black squirter with the underglaze and putting on a design like that as well.